If my pastor is discovered to be a particularly dark sinner, are his words that he preached of Christ for me still good? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. They're kind of, this is kind of a two-part question, but, but right at the, at the obvious point here, if you've got a pastor who's done some big, nasty, public, particularly dark, really just beyond the pale sort of sin in this case is what we're, is what we're highlighting. And he's been preaching something faithful to me. Does that, does that negate the words he has preached to me? The simple answer is no, <clears throat> but it asks for an explanation of that. If your past, pastor doesn't regularly say he's included with sinners, he should be including himself, because he is. Um, the real question, and, and the, the, the writer is getting to this, the real question is, does his horrible behavior invalidate the message that he was preaching? And the answer is no. If he has been preaching the gospel, Christ's death for us, in our place, in our stead, to our benefit, and freely given, that message remains true regardless of pastor's behavior. One of the chapters in the history of the church, Augustine's time, had to do with a controversy called the Donatist Controversy. And the Donatists said, if your pastor is not in a state of grace, you don't receive the benefits of the Lord's Supper because he isn't in a state of grace. And Augustine went up against the whole Donatist party to say that's simply an untrue claim and using scripture to show that it was untrue. I'm glad we have that in our church history because it's, for many, the sto their own story. It's in the background of what that questioner was writing. And Augustine's answer was, it doesn't matter whether your priest is in a state of grace as to whether you benefit from the supper. You benefit from it anyway, regardless of his inner state. It's sort of a microcosm of what we're discussing today. And Augustine's answer was utterly clear. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's a scandal, but it's not something that breaks the contract that Christ has signed for you forever. A second part of what we've talked about, and we started to touch on a little bit in another episode, is about... Why is it not a greater scandal at this point that so few churches right. can you expect the, the Christ's gospel to be preached? Right, every single Sunday. And, and not including a, a tacked-on altar call at the end. I mean the message from, I hope, Scripture. With a, with a, with a uh, as you said, leaning towards gospel. Obviously. right with emphasis toward gospel. Every Sunday, you can bet your mother into white slavery he's going to do it. That's the kind of parish you want to be attending. Because we need it. We desperately need and it. And it's so easy to think that, that God's words are so easily negated because of the one who is speaking them. Right. It's, it's easy for us to fall into that trap. It's an right. emotional connection. Whether we like to believe it or not, I, I remember hearing about the, the struggle of how always having emotionally, it's just almost unavoidable for people to put their pastor on a pedestal. Yes. And not recognize that he's really with you as a sinner. Yeah, he's I not above you, he's with you. He's I, yeah, I recommend to pastors, include yourselves. And don't just say you sinners, we sinners. Include yourself. And then sometimes we get reminded like this really good and hard that the pastor can go, South. Yep. These poor guys. Yep. You know, and, and and some of them you can't even say poor. They've just made such dark decisions that you just gotta say, you just gotta you know, the law in all its ways has to be brought in here, you know, if they've gone particularly dark. And, you know, we've we've heard some of this recently in the in the Christian church in America, 
which is kind of why we're talking about this, because um, when it gets particularly egregious, right? People, people tend to, you know, I've seen people in church tend to be pretty forgiving. Yeah. Generally speaking, they're, they're going to, they're out of the love for the pastor, they're going to give them some room to fail. But we're talking really bad. Yeah. And I'm not going to go into details here, but, you know, really dark. And it's easy at that point for us to just go. The message must be false. Everything has been tainted by this. Yep. Everything. Yep. And that, and that the words spoken to me are not faithful and that I've been led astray the entire time. Yep. And I was being led away from Christ the entire time and didn't know it or something like that. Yep. Tragic. That's the temptation. Yeah. Is, to, is to believe that it was an, that it, it, it caused that his darkness while that, cause it was going on in the background. You find out the entire time. Right. Right. Which is where this comes from. I think is that, is that because that was, he was going and preaching and then he was going and doing these terrible things and we didn't know it. Now we do. Yep. So how can his word be faithful if he was getting off of the pulpit, getting in his car and driving off and doing these terrible things yep. and then going back to the pulpit again? Yep. How can he be preaching faithful words if he's doing that? He obviously doesn't believe what he's saying. Difficult, really difficult. But <clears throat> we do have biblical references, passages that apply even to somebody like that. The key question is, is the gospel true? Is the gospel true? And was he preaching it, even though he might not have believed it, was he preaching it accurately from Scripture such that it was getting across to hearers? Now, that leaves out his morality. But that's the Donatist controversy. It doesn't turn on his morality. It turns on 1 Corinthians 15. It turns on whether Christianity delivers what actually happened to any reader. Starting with the resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Did Jesus rise from the grave? Right. As it was written. Right. Yep, it turns on that. Sometimes it can seem, we've done this in a number of episodes, it seems too simple. Uh -huh. I can't tell you how much I see people question it because it just can't be that easy. It can't be that simple. There's the scandal of the gospel. Exactly that. And part of us, when we come to that dark place, if we know people who've been hurt by such a guy, we're directly connected to someone like the, the kind that we're talking about. It's emotionally very difficult to not run to condemnation. Sure. And to want to think that, that the gospel is for him too. You want to think, well, yeah, not him. Yeah. You know, the, the damage is so great that, that they want to retract that and say, well, you know, kick him into the pit. Yeah. You know, we, 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 in our pain and in our suffering and in those who are hurt that we care about. Right. I agree. That's a second. That's kind of a secondary. It's not on point for this, but it's a next natural, next natural step. Yep. For somebody who's been a hurt, a victim of that in some way, even just in the blast zone of that. Yep. Even if not directly. Yep. Yeah. It's always tragic, <clears throat> but... Christian belief does not turn on the morality of the pastor. Christian belief turns on whether the message is true, whether these things actually happen in a public way, his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection the third day, it turns on that. If you want to attack Christianity, that's where to attack it. For some reason, it reminds me of the stories of, in a couple of cases, of what happened in the Nuremberg trials, um, when you had uh, you had guys, you know, some of those Nazi officers who were uh, judges, who were yeah, who were on trial, and they were approached and counseled, and I can't remember the names involved, um, pastoral counseling to reach them, and they actually had. A case, uh, I, I think it was more than one, uh, of of repentance, even after all the big nasty darkness of everything that had been done under these men before, they had at least a case of repentance. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first, then to the Greek Romans, and it's sufficient. It is sufficient, so, and its sufficiency is is part of the scandal. 
because we always want to get ourselves in a positive way into the deal. And the gospel says, your part in this deal is that you're a sinner. That's your part. The other part is his part, that he died for that and for you and was risen again for that and for you. That's a scandal. It was in the early years of Christianity. I could keep going on this. I, I, I can just, it's, we're our, our, we, we want to think that people are basically good. Yep. And when people are particularly wicked, we want to bring, we want to call down the hellfire like the, like the sons of thunder. We want to be the guys that yes. just be like, you know, yes. Turn that guy to a cinder. He's obviously just, yep. just beyond normal twisted. It's like, okay, God, come on. Yep. I, I, un, uh, average sin I get. Yep. You know, coveting, lusting. Yep. You know, hating. Okay. Yep. But look at what this guy did. Are you, are you telling me that it's for that too? That's offensive. That someone like that might repent. Yep. Yep. And, that, and would still be saved. Yep. Woo. We don't like to think that way. But in the meantime, the good news is that God's word continues to be true regardless of who has spoken it. That's right. Yeah, that's what's behind the answer to this guy's question. The answer is no, and here's why. All right, this one, this one's right to the point right now. This is mid-2022, we're in July 2022, and this is just, we've had some recent things going on in the church that, you know, have brought this kind of question about, and I hope this is helpful for some if you're in our audience that you know, are affected by these things, and... Uh, hopefully get some good news to you about that. Um, and and we, we understand that we can bring a perspective. The Lutheran perspective on that has light. So hope this is helpful for you. Come uh, to 1517.org for more, and we will see you on social media. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it. <laughs>